In this video, I'm going to teach you how to build for loops. We just went over how to build uh, while loops and how to use nested while loops. Uh, but what the for loop does is it accomplishes the same goal, but a lot of programmers actually prefer for loops because they handle the entire uh, iteration functionality all within one set of parentheses and I'm going to show you what that means here in a second so if you remember back on our while loop uh, you remember that we had to instantiate a, uh, a variable uh, place in a conditional and then you had to at the end of the loop uh, you had to put in some kind of either sentinel value or something that would make the while statement false it, so that you could go and uh, exit the loop or exit the program uh, with for loops they do that all for you automatically and so what I'll show you here is we're not even going to have to create a variable at all we're just going to do for and then we'll set up our parentheses and then you actually uh, in, uh, initialize your variable in the beginning so we're going to do var i is equal to one and then you do a semicolon or a colon and then uh, we do uh, let's see we're just going to do a simple loop so we'll do i is less than or equal to 10 and a colon again and then i plus plus and in the parentheses start brackets and we'll just console log the results of i and then end it okay so what uh, just to show you exactly what this means the for loop is uh, broken into three components they're the exact same ones as we did in the while loop we had a variable that we initialized to some value then we uh, had to have some condition that had to become false in order for the program to end and so you, and then you had a incrementer or a sentiment uh, uh, or a sentinel value that made sure that this condition would eventually become false in the for loop we have the exact same thing so the same rules apply except it all happens within one set of parentheses so here we initialize the variable then in the next section we make sure that uh, we put our conditional in so we say that i is less than or equal to 10 and then in the last section we uh, increment it and we use our shorthand increment um, uh, value there and so let's see if this works so we'll click run and as you can see right there in the console, you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So that worked perfectly. And as you can see, the for loop is a much easier syntax. And the, other, the nice thing about it, it's much more difficult to, uh, to get a infinite loop because you remember to put your incrementer here in the very beginning doesn't mean it's impossible you could switch up your signs or do something like that and uh, get in trouble but uh, that is how you put in a basic for loop you also have the same exact flexibility uh, to be able to increment or add conditionals or anything like that so uh, just like we did on the last time I'm gonna clear out the console down here and so you can see it clearly uh, this time we're going to print out uh, I uh, twice or we're gonna skip every other one so we're gonna do I is equal to I plus 2 and so what that's going to do is it's going to every time it goes through the loop it's going to increment I not by 1 but by 2 so it should print out 1 3 5 7 and 9 so we'll hit run again and that's perfect you can see here in the console we have one three five seven and nine so to review what the for loop does is it kind of just consolidates everything from the while loop and puts it all into one section for you and in the next section we'll uh, actually go and refactor our last program so that uh, we do it with a for loop